Hey everyone, it's Kirk here again at Option Alpha, and I wanted to walk through something that happens to me often and how I go about investigating bot logs to see what kind of activity or inactivity is happening in my bot. And that's because my bot maybe isn't entering any trades, but the bot is turned on. And I know a lot of people have this question all the time. We see it a lot in the community and in support. People writing in saying like, hey, my bot's turned on, it hasn't made a trade for a week or two weeks or two days or whatever the case is, but my bot's on, so what is happening? And so I wanna help you answer that question today because I personally have that question all the time for different strategies and different bots that I'm running. And so I wanna show you a couple examples. We'll go through a good bot, profitable bot, not profitable bot, doesn't matter, just showing you exactly what I go through in the bot log. So here's an example of a bot that I run for TLT. This is a Hexabot specifically for TLT. And you can see that this bot basically never has under allocated capital. I mean, actually almost never has had under allocated capital since it started. But just recently, like today, the day that I'm recording this, you can see that it's still been at a zero allocation. I think it's been here for a couple days now. Yeah, it was here last week as well. It's not allocating any capital. So it's not trading, it's not finding trades, but the bot is actually on. You can see that the automations are on, it's actually running. You can see since this morning, three scanners have already run, it's already made 27 decisions, but it has zero positions. It hasn't allocated any capital whatsoever. So this is a challenge and I have this challenge too, which is like, what the heck is going on? Like, why isn't the bot doing anything? There's no positions, it's got no activity, or like it's not, it's not entering positions, but it has activity, the logs are running, the, the bot's doing something, so what is happening? And look, the end of result here is that everything you need to know about a bot is inside the log. So here's how I would go about kind of investigating this and figuring out what's happening. Number one is I already checked that the bot is on, so that's good. I already know in the dashboard we have activity today, so the bot is running, it is doing what it needs to do going through its automations. If I go into the log, I can now start to see all the activity that the bot has had today, yesterday, the last day, et cetera. And I can start to filter this activity by certain types of events if I wanted to. Now, in this case, because the bot hasn't entered a position, the only thing it's doing is scanning for new positions. So I don't have to filter for scanner, but I can just so I can see that the bot is actually scanning through positions. Now here is where you can actually see not only the history of all the automations that were run and at what frequency, but now you can also start to see more important information. Like I can start to see where any positions potentially attempted to be open and then were those positions filtered out. So let's actually go back or let's go back up to the top here and see just the most recent run. Like why hasn't the bot entered a position? So if I go here and I open the most recent automation run, you can see that it's passing a lot of my checkpoints. Market volatility is below my threshold. It's determining the market trend. The technicals are not oversold. And then I get down here to these different checks. Now in this case, I have a couple different automation checks in my Hexabot. Yours might be different, but again, this is where you'd start to investigate your own bot and your own decisions here. And you can see here that I have a check for a pre-entry check. That pre-entry check is just making sure that my target position I'm trying to get into is available, which it is and that the required capital is less than how much I have allocated for this bot, which it is. So great, that's fine. It passed those pre-entry checks. And again, you can see, you can check all of these different decisions to make sure that they pass your requirements. This is where you can kind of investigate what the bot is doing and what decisions it's ultimately making. Now in this case, it actually got to this point of trying to pass these opportunity filters and it failed at one of these opportunity filters. So this is where I can see that it actually is stopping the bot from entering a new position. And it's not that the bot is just making these decisions on their own, they can't, they're not that smart yet. They're not making these decisions on your own. You're telling it, hey, it needs to be this criteria or this you know, environment or this use case, whatever. In my case for this Hexabot, I have a number of those opportunity filters, those kind of like pre-entry checks. I wanna make sure the bid ask spread is tight. That passed, you can see that. I wanna make sure there's enough open interest. That passed for it as well. But then when it came to the rate of return threshold, that rate of return threshold was not above my minimum requirement. Basically, I wasn't collecting enough money for it to try and attempt a position. So the premium just wasn't there. There was liquidity, it was tight markets, there was a lot of people trading it. However, they weren't paying a lot for entering these short call spreads in TLT, so I didn't actually end up getting into the position because again, you can see it failed at that opportunity filter. Never actually got to 
I got to the point of trying to attempt the position. So this is what, again where you can see, okay, that happened. But let's go back further and see like, well, what about if it got past that, but then filtered out a trade for a different reason. So here's one that has a different uh, type of status information, which is a filtered position. And so if I open up this one, and this one happened uh, last week on Friday, so it was still attempting to open positions, you can see that it got filtered out for a particular reason. Now in this case, it passed the opportunity or the pre-entry check and it passed the opportunity filters. So my initial filters, kind of like my, my pre-filters for getting into the position, were all really good. Bid ask spread was tight, lots of open interest, the rate of return on the position actually jumped back up. Remember originally it was like 8.3 uh, earlier today. So originally, like last week, it was 21.95. Probability of profit was decently good. It was past kind of these pre-filters that I put in there. However, you can see that the position, oh, I, got, I backed out too far. However, you can see that the position was filtered because I have a minimum requirement on all of my positions to have positive expected value. So now that we include expected value calculations, which we do uniquely here at Option Alpha, I've included all of my positions to calculate the expected value of any potential position and make sure it's above a certain threshold. In this case, this position, even though it had a high probability of success, even though it had a lot of premium that it was collecting and a lot of liquidity, when you net net netted out everything for the expected outcome and the expected value of this position, the expected value of the position was negative. So I didn't want to enter a position that had a negative expected outcome if I were to enter multiple, multiple trades over time. So that's why it filtered out this potential position. And now when you look at that, you can see like, okay, there's a lot of times recently where just the pricing and the volatility and the market dynamics were not there for this bot to enter a position. And so in this case for TLT, I'm not gonna make any changes to this bot because that's what I want a bot to do. I want a bot to go through all of these different market dynamics and try to figure out like when is the optimal time to get into a position. And clearly right now at this moment that I'm recording this video, yesterday too, or last week, it's just not the right time for TLT to enter positions. Let me switch over to another one here so you can see this one. This one is FXI. Now FXI, this one went through a period where it didn't enter positions for quite some time. You can see that down here, it had this like negative, or not negative, but zero allocation. Notice that it went through quite a long period, you know, more than a week or two of no entering positions. So during that time, you can go to the logs again, you can filter by scanner, and you can see like why it was not entering positions or why it's not continuing to enter positions. And you can see that in this case, it's still filtering out trades. In this case for same thing for FXI as for TLT, it's filtering out trades for negative expected value for each of these contracts. Now, it eventually did get into some positions, I think uh, further up here or further down, it got into positions. And so those positions you can see eventually did work out. This is where it's so cool you can see in the logs and you can kind of investigate this for yourself. But back on July 19th, you can see it was originally earlier in the morning filtering out positions that it was trying to get into, but the expected value was just not there yet. The, the probabilities and how much you could potentially collect for a position versus the likelihood of losing that position and how much you lose on that position just wasn't there net net. But eventually the pricing kind of came around and once you got to uh, the basically like the 11 a.m. run, you can see that the bot actually ended up opening up the position. And so it passed all the filters and in this case, the bot had done that expected value check here, and it was greater than a dollar, it was $1.62 per contract. So that's really cool. You can actually see when it was getting into a position and when it was getting out of a position. Now, recently, it's been trying to, again, get into more positions this morning, which is great. It doesn't have a full portfolio, and so now it's trying to get into positions, but we're running into the same thing again, which is fine. This is what we wanted to do. We wanted to avoid these negative expected value positions. We want pricing to kind of come in and you know find us later. And you can see that actually the expected value looks like it's going, going back the opposite direction this morning potentially, so that's good. We'll just let it continue to do its thing and continue to work through these. Let's go to a different one here too. I think XOP was another one. Yeah, XOP even today, so just this morning at 10.30, which is a minute ago as I'm recording this video, it was trying to get into new positions. Let's filter out for scanners. And you can see that it was it was trying to get into new positions all morning. Uh, and the EV was like 99 cents. So it wasn't quite above our dollar threshold here. 
And so earlier this morning, let's see what it was. It was negative 153, and then it finally passed and it got into the position here. And you can see the expected value was much better at $4.43. If I actually go and view the position, you can see that the expected value currently is about 288. So it's starting to move a little bit, but I feel like we got really good pricing on the trade, obviously, because the net net expected value of this position in XOP uh, was above zero and, and profitable or positive expected value. So that's that's what we wanted. We wanted the bot to eventually wait for that opportunity. And you can see it took quite some time here. It didn't do anything last week. So it was waiting last week and then trying again to get into the position here before it finally opened the trade. So look, I know that sometimes it can be you know frustrating if you're going through trades or you're going through your bots and they're not quite doing what you want. But this is where you need to go. You need to go to the logs and you need to determine why the bot is not entering a position by the decisions that the bot is making. Let's take one more look at another one. Let's go to our monthly iron condor portfolio. And you can see this bot actually is set up to enter six trades at one time and it can enter six per day, but it's only got two trades currently. So again, the bot is on and it's working, it's running, but it's not entering all the trades. So why is that? Well, if I go to my scanner automation and if I go start looping through here, you can start to see the different decisions that the bot is making. And for the most part, this bot is looking for things that have just even the slightest elevation of implied volatility. We added a new IV filter to this in one of our previous videos um, because we wanted to kind of filter out the low level liquidity trades. And so you can see for SPY, the bot doesn't have a position, so it can enter a position, but the IV rank is not above it, the minimum threshold of 15. We basically say, look, IV rank has to be below 100, so not super max, and it's got to be above 15. It's got to filter out those lower levels of IV. And so if you filter through some of the symbols that it's looking at, like TLT and SPY and GLD, FXI, you can see that it's filtering those out because of low liquidity. XRT, it already has a position in, XLP, then you get to EEM. EEM actually has acceptable implied volatility. It's over 15, below 100, that's good. But then when you get to, again, your opportunity filters, you can see it's not passing. The bid-ask spread's just way too wide in EEM right now, which is fine. We'll let it continue to enter positions later when the liquidity kind of comes back in. So same thing here for the rest of them. The rest of them just low level liquidity right now. So the bot just basically keeps checking, which is fine, and then goes into you know kind of pause mode and not enter positions until it meets all of your criteria. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just kind of walking through what I do inside of my bots. I use my bot logs religiously. Like every day that I go in and check a bot, I will go through the logs, see what's going on, what decisions it's making. If I'm you know, wondering why it's not entering a trade or why it got out of the position, I always check the bot log. So that's where you can kind of investigate what your bot's doing, what decisions it's making, and how it's filtering out trades. Remember, if the automations are on, your bot is running and making decisions. It's just what decisions are you having it make? And that's where you can start to make shifts or changes to your strategy if you want to give the bot more control or more leeway or change up the dynamics of what it's filtering for before entering a position. So as always, if you need anything, let us know. Until next time, happy trading.